you're a busy man, which is a good thing. Yep. Always, always, always. Yeah, the latest headache we got right now is um, this, uh, you know, this fucking rigged election that uh, has been set up by Angel. Um, yep, it's... Uh, she ain't even trying to hide it. No. Did you happen to read uh, my letter and her response? I did. I... Uh... I read it uh, when I woke up this morning, and uh, I know I'll be honest. I kind of skimmed over, it and I was like, "Okay, it's just, it just doesn't really mean anything. It's just pay." Hey, basically, this is mm. where it should have been. Yada yada. Yeah. But, you, know, I, you don't implement something after nominations have gone up. Yeah. You change the way that the votes are going to be cast. Yeah, it's uh, it's a distraction for uh, the entire response to me. Read like, um. Yes, we were lazy, a bunch of ad hominems, uh, a straw men, and then just like justifying gerrymandering by saying, oh, the governor said we were supposed to do it kind of like this, but no, it's not. Like, it's like the equivalent of saying like, you know, um, <laughs> I, I gave this example to someone. It's like, if you're wearing a white shirt and you asked me to get you a brown one and I just took a shit on it and was like, Oh, but that's what you wanted. You wanted a fucking brown shirt. Like, that doesn't make it right, you dumb fuck. <laughs> Good analogy. Yeah. Um, so, what, um, there's a lot we needed to talk about a couple of days ago. Yeah, the first thing I, I think is worth bringing to attention to you right now is this case on the docket where uh, it shows the incompetence of Brittany Angel and her judges. And it shows that they're working with the marshals in a manner that is highly conflicted. To the yeah. Point where no one can have a fair trial. I. Yes, I think the um, the problem, at, and I'm gonna point back at the letter. The reason I, I, I'm going to derive before you, you know, give me your information so you can see kind of where my stance is. Uh, from the very moment I started to notice some of the early edits um, to legislation, and there was shadow edits. In other words, edits made without notice. Um, oh, I noticed one before they even started making changes really they upped their own pay and Yikes. they put you know how they put that uh those notes out of no changes mm. or stuff like that well i have a photo of what their pay was from the md uh t mm. and it is they put they up their own pay for uh judges why and then they oh. didn't announce the change that's fucking ridiculous see yep. they um it, 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 I would call it sleight of hand, but it's sleight of hand to the masses, right? The reality of the matter is that uh, throughout San Andreas, um, people are not going to read things. Ain't nobody got time for that shit. But then if they read it, interpretation becomes the next step, right? And um, the way the marshals were sold, it was oversight over like the police department and whatnot however in practice they have hired so many incompetent fools to the extent that the second in command daisy dakakis had the literal adapt had the audacity to say that a do uh i don't know if you saw it but sky Fay had a like text messages leak and put into a document she was no, making the claim that. that you could get arrested because it goes against the right to privacy. One of the most like idiotic takes ever. But the thing is like that sort of like mental gymnax gymnastics and lack of just like common sense and just, it makes you wonder like what bizarro island, you know, they originate from because it just, it doesn't like, it, you know, it, it it's so ridiculous. But so... Yeah. Um, you can't get arrested for uh, retweeting someone who posts something in the public comments. Yes, 
if you read a item that's being leaked it's exact, exactly the same thing uh, uh, precisely and it was around that time that um the the marshals changed from being a oversight to per, pretty much becoming attack dogs uh for those that align with let's just say the political party that runs deep between uh a segment of the doj um the bcso and elements uh other elements in the city there's a like singular alignment right and and when i say singular alignment i mean you'll see them sort of helping each other out in ways that are not only gross but just uh it, it, like the collusion is not only gross but it's like it, it's like it, it, it's the inherent definition of corruption um note that right now there is hot there's angel and i think that's it um that's correct adams as well but i believe he's on loa yeah and so now there's no like balance of uh there is no balance how and with angel being the head of the marshals just by having that position her ability to oversee becomes null and void right like Especially in any realistic she's sense signing anything off right yep because every judge so here's something that i noticed mm. every single marshal subpoena has to be signed off by commander Brittany angel what? commanding officer and then is a judge ever going to deny a search warrant that has been signed by their boss yes exactly is any marshal going to investigate something that goes against their boss i would like you to take note of the response uh to the open letter and this is look i've spoken to angel um and i'm going to give you very one very particular uh exchange i had with her uh, she's this type of individual that you know it's going to go sideways the moment you, you give a con like a contending point right um she wrote something called the den act uh this is a reaction to the lspd uh choosing to reduce the time uh of a of a certain arrest i think it was like lang buddha at all and um dundee at all they, they they had somewhere like 800 900 months and peters who is the assistant chief was like this is ridiculous um let's you know cut it down to like 200 right but they ultimately yeah. decided on 500. angel had a absolute tantrum uh in front of his entire department over saying you can't do that blah 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 even though historically over the last 20 years that's how things have been discretion officer discretion uh, let me further point out that she then went on to Twata and claimed that me and Andy Jones were in charge of slide uh, the sliders for time and fine. And then wrote up the Den Act, which effectively turned lawyers into a, um, a coupon, a 20% off coupon. And like then, the yes. And then limited the police's ability to change things. I confronted her on this in a way to like understand her position, right? But it was, you could tell that she didn't have one because she couldn't articulate the most basic like uh, uh, issues surrounding it, right? Um, and, and that's when Unlike I realized- Crane would. I'm sorry? Unlike how Crane would. I, I'm not a fan of Crane. I didn't like the guy. He didn't like me, but mm. he would always give you the articulation of why he's made a decision, and it makes sense. Yes. The the thing is, though, it's not that I don't believe that she could articulate. It's the fact that she couldn't, which more pointed less at her ineptitude and more at her knee-jerk decision-making, right? So in other words, like mm. if you were to take a random position in the moment and then you died on that hill, you probably aren't going to have like a consistent, like, like, uh, you're not going to be very consistent when, when, when asked questions, cause you didn't actually think the idea through, you didn't, you know, you just came up with it. 
So I asked her, I'm like, so you're telling me for the last two months, police have been illegally reducing time and fine to people. And she's like, oh, uh, yeah, well, actually, yeah, I guess. But like, you know, I don't want to say that because then we have to go back and like charge all these people. Da, da, da. Shut the fuck up. Bullshit. You know what I mean? Like fucking you bullshit. Have to go back and charge. People. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah. It was literally there's no thought behind it. So let me go a little bit further. She then told me I could move these, uh, you know, change the fines, right? And um, and made it very clear in that conversation that it was a statewide effect, right? I had fines, and he had times. We had a clear enough conversation that this was like an obvious point. I reduced the fines down to 50%. Uh, subsequently... Uh, Ventura, a member of the BCSO, complained to her because this would affect their BCSO from farming a budget. <laughs> and she ordered me to change it back. Uh, we're actually pushing for impeachment on that point. Uh, but in that conversation and when she ordered me it back, after I heard more of her like deranged logic, I said to her, straight up i said angel do you ever utilize any logic when making decisions and she fucking lost it but that entire scenario and my strong belief that even if the and when this goes and sees the day of light in court that she's gonna lie through her fucking teeth about how that conversation went in fact, she may do so because in her twisted delusion, she probably doesn't remember some of the shit she said. So that's why you got to write it down. It's got to be an open letter. So the words cannot be misunderstood. And in that response, and this is why I went down this entire story path, if she makes it very clear, the inferences in her responses, the Constitution says this so I can do whatever the fuck I want. No, you can't, motherfucker. And now it's in writing first. Yup. Yeah, she likes to capitalize items as well. What do you mean? In her responses, she'll uh, capitalize the word uh, you, uh, citizen, primary residency. But like... You can tell she's almost angry when she put in, uh, you in capitals. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, it's, um, like I said, it's, it's, uh, I don't think, you know, it's, um, explaining calculus to someone that doesn't understand, like, the Pythagorean theorem or, like, basic algebra, like, they're like, what do you mean you can use calculus to, you know, figure out velocity? You can't do that. It's just math. <laughs> My math book told me. <laughs> you want to know why, Nino? Hmm. Because you have to start with your two plus twos from yeah. the beginning. And yeah. neither of the current justices served as lawyers in this city. No. I mean, neither have the marshals. They A lot of them don't have uh, fucking, like... Fucking, it's fucking ridiculous. I mean, there's some good ones. It's just where they, they just fucking populate them off the street. Anyways. But, but, but go ahead, please. Um, what, um, you mentioned, hmm, the point that we were on was, hmm, yeah. So this can go to your impeachment, but... Do you want the TLDR, or do you want me to talk you through this and let you investigate and discover, as I discovered? Um, I probably don't have time to uh, deep dive, but I'd like That's to fine. hear it through. So, essentially, Marco Frey, um, he is Cyprus. Um, long story short, uh, one of the Cyprus guys got executed up in near the lighthouse. Uh anonymous 911s went out saying hey there's a you know someone got executed there there's a body in the river uh one of the marshals uh craig barrett 
uh, he's written in his statement that the exact anonymous 911 came back to this house in Mirror Park, uh, which is where uh, Marco Frey lives. Uh, units arrived on scene, uh, yada, yada, yada. They eventually ended up uh, seeing him. He came out of his house. Uh, they eventually applied for a search warrant because the deceased person uh, had transferred a house to Marco Frey. Um, the PC was extremely weak um, <clears throat> in terms of it. So that was the main point of that. And then uh, we looked at the uh, subpoena that had been given to the client. Chad, do I know about this or did I learn this on Brian? So we're thinking, okay, that's a bit strange. So we requested it on the docket, accusing them of uh, withholding evidence. The signatures show, and this is very specific. Let me just pull it up. That, yeah, this is the people that killed him went in the house. Didn't I get, didn't Barrett tell me this? Oh, no, 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 Robin. Robin told me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Double checking. See, so this is why. I... Okay, I've got it here. This is the case that Robin was working, right? Uh, I'm not too sure Moose Knuckles is on it now. I think it's a different mm. one. Okay. So, on the signatures, the search warrant was signed by Craig Barrett on uh, the 9th at 12.01.05 a.m. Uh, Judge Arnold Weiss, 16 seconds later, signed it at 12.01.21 uh, a.m. What? And then... The search warrant was uh, filled out. Uh, sorry, the search warrant was uh, conducted 12 hours later at, I think it's 11, uh, uh, about 12 hours later. Mm. And then 14 hours later, the commanding officer, Brittany Angel, signed the signature. Now, the search and seizure legislation says that the commanding officer has to have signed it before it even goes to a judge, which would make this null and void this search warrant. But the real problem is, A, Brittany Angel not even caring to look to get stuff signed off. Her marshals are literally going to a judge saying, yeah, I've got this, it's really good information. Well, claiming that you know that an anonymous 911, without a doubt, came from a residence is just factually incorrect. And they didn't even have a GPS evidence for it. <clears throat> You can take that if you need. Um, yeah, let me just take it real fast. <laughs> yeah, I got time. Go for it. Howdy, Nino. How you doing, brother? Hey, very good. Do you mind if I call you right back after my meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Sorry right. to interrupt. Easy. See ya. All right. Talk to you soon. I, I, I see where, where this is going is, and this is sort of the fear that I was sort of, uh, that I was pointing at is inherently when you have a singular uh, judge or justice who is hiring judges who have less power than them while simultaneously they have power over the marshals who handle everything from flying drones over drug calls all the way up to these Rocco Rico cases all the way to investigating internal affairs, you now have a system where decisions will be made as long as they align with the political uh, beliefs of a singular entity. Now, let's not, let's not be coy here. Hot is non-existent. Yeah. You know, and... If you are a non-existent entity and you're probably going to side with your peer. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. That Den Act I mentioned before, and I'm throwing a little bit of doom on here. And yes, it's a bit speculative, but. Did you know that when the Den Act was passed and we started mobilizing against it alongside many others? both in the police department, the citizenry, etc. We brought this point to 
Justice Bailey. He sat here, right on that bench to my right. Heard our concerns. Um, the next day he retired. I heard he stood down. Yep. Now before that Do you retirement, think that was uh, by his own hand. Ah, uh, yes. Um. Now. I will say that. Alana Reviews, um, who is now an LSPD officer, brought to his attention the, the, the then act um, that next day. I was supposed to meet him. And um, actually, my timeline's a little bit off. Uh, the Bailey thing was a couple days prior to that. It's that Alana had brought it up to him um, the day after, I believe, the den act was enacted. And Bailey was not confided conferred with at all before it was passed so the whole charade about needing like all the judges being on board is bullshit bailey disagreed with it said what the fuck i never even got uh, reviewed this shit my considerations weren't put in he removed the den act hours later he stepped down hours later Brittany Angel posted the then act back up. Now you tell me what that says. That oh. tells me he was forced out. That tells me it was going to go back up regardless of yep. what he said. I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you even more. Is, um, rewinding back two months ago, um, my team sat down and wrote 15 pieces of legislation now i'm going to tell you the the reason why that that was a conversation i had with bailey on the bench because we were starting from scratch right there's no legislation on um expanding on uh you know stand your ground what it how we can give out money for events like you name it right there's there's nothing and so myself and a and you know a total team of six started uh putting everything together so that we could spend the rest of the term signing off on businesses making sure taxes are good right um yeah. and the interpretation that was manufactured instead of like asking us hey why are you submitting like this much um they created this like ghost argument that we're shotgunning legislation so no one reads it like fucking idiotic right um like you're working too hard was you know what i'm saying now what happened was is that bailey started reviewing it according to him and um he made it clear to all the other justices that he was reviewing it and angel came in and just tossed it all out pretty much giving him a massive fuck you so now imagine if this is the behavior and the um the line of if this is the way that you're operating what's going to happen to everyone that that is witnessing it and works for you you're going to fucking fall in line definitely to an extent is what i would say having Look, all I can say is I can see a mirror from the past for me in terms of uh, my struggles with the DOJ as a judge. I slowly lost any uh, any ability to have my say on uh, legislation as well back in the day. It It is very much mirroring that. And uh, yes, at, at the end of the day, you're not going to speak up against the person who directly holds the, holds that position over your head, right? And you probably are just going to fall in line. I didn't realize uh, you were a justice before. Was it a judge? Just uh, we didn't really have justices. We mm. had a we had a supreme justice, so we kind of had what it feels like we have right now. We have I, I call her Supreme Justice Angel at this point because that is ultimately what she is at the moment because she is calling the shots, and I don't necessarily disagree with a one person leading role but 
definitely back in my day when I was a judge, uh, the amount of power that uh, someone like Crane yielded was significantly less and it was more managed. It was a fair amount of power. Yeah. Hmm. Um. She's, uh, <sighs> she's very opportune. Because Yo, Jay, thank you for the nine months. The revolt against the last mayorship came at the right time. They were already planning a coup of the DOJ, and uh, you know, what? I would have put my money on Norman Adams being the one who tried to stand up and take it all. I was uh, hoping for Bailey, if I'm going to be honest. He's, uh, he's got the guts, but I don't think he's got that killer spirit. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, San Andreas can sap the life of... out of you. Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. That's why I had to move up north. Had to get out of the big city and enjoy San Andreas, enjoy San Andreas for the uh, quiet times as well. Are there any other examples of this? Um, let's call it. <laughs> it's crazy just hearing this. It's uh, th there is a way out. Practice. Um, and, and it's What's not good. I impeachment. Um, there is another thing that uh, uh, impeachment being one of the uh, one of them, right? Um, Can I give you some uh, information on an impeachment? Because yes. I am one of the few people who has actually pushed impeachment in the city. It was single-handedly the worst experience I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, you are not only going up against the person you're impeaching. You're going up against the whole city who is backing them if they are loved and you're also going up against the state who is hamstringing you at every single corner yo occam's can i fly you in it is okay. a very hard thing to push through and prove and get successfully pushed i would look at the poor effort by murphy braun to impeach the previous mayor which by the way he was very impeachable very impeachable. I worked on his staff. He was extremely impeachable. <laughs> but when you have someone who's not as smart as they think they are pushing impeachment. I love memeing that. It's so good. Uh, it's going to fall over. Now, he did that by himself. You have a team around you along with Pred. And that's powerful because you can actually put together eight to ten minds and come up with something that should potentially stick. But just be careful because you may think you have something and then it's thrown out. That's the issue, right? Uh, I, I'm going to keep pointing at this letter, right? It is so fucking... It, it's a straw man. <laughs> and so... If you cannot even comprehend an argument, right? If the head justice or supreme justice or whatever cannot have, has comprehension issues, either malicious or otherwise, right? Well, then you post something that under any other review by any other justice, be it Bailey, Adams, et cetera, et cetera, Let's say they would be like, okay, this makes sense. See, all it takes is hot to throw it out. I have no reason to believe that she is not under the thumb of Angel. So, but, uh, man, I want to, we need to have a chat sometime because I've got a, I've got a card under my, my belt. I just don't, can't show it to you right now. Hold on to it for now. Yeah. Never reveal until it's time. Yeah. It's, uh... Look, I'll be honest. That mm. impeachment, I don't think it'll have a justice. What they did for mine was mm. they bring in... You remember when they had those... It will. Who... I, I, it will. 
it will be seen um i can i can uh i i can be sure of that oh it'll be seen i just don't think it'll be a justice i don't think it can be uh done that way i see I what you're saying they would try and bring someone back maybe a couple of the uh old guard maybe a stanton maybe a labar maybe reach out to people who still hold weight in this city who could barely oversee it e yeah um that's how i would approach it if i was the uh i guess the state the impeachment goes to at this point right the unfortunate thing really is is um like you know when you take a a, a couple steps back um the desire of the people the desire of my cabinet is a level of fairness right um that and that fairness to achieve it requires a doj that is doing their job hiring that judges to be around exactly you cannot cultivate judge for 25 days that and that's exactly it and and I, I quite frankly i think people are sick of the excuses because the answers are obvious uh, look at my cabinet right um that didn't manufacture itself i didn't know any of them except for tilly who i happened to cross when asking for a foia and and heard about her plight i met each and every one of these individuals in the city I noticed that they were passionate to help people and I brought them in. That's all it was. I needed to cultivate an environment where people felt valued and felt a sense of ownership. And that was built in a span of three months. Actually, it was originally built in a span of one. Um, and two of them are up for running for judges in the city. Now, the reason I point that out is, what the fuck did the DOJ expect? You can't sit back and be like, well, nobody wants to be a judge. There's too much shit to write. Fuck out of here. You think if somebody... You, there, there's plenty of people that can take on those roles, but it requires cultivation. You have to tend to the garden. You gotta continue planting the seeds. But I don't think systematically that desire is there. I agree with that point. And so it even when I say impeachment, it's not what I want. Because what happens after that? I recognize the fallout. If let's say Angel gets impeached, then what? Who takes the realm? Who takes the helm? Because the the fucking that building is a fucking barren wasteland what hot takes it that's not gonna make it any better it'll go backwards mm -hmm. that's that's truly why we didn't go down this line so many times over but it's kind of like we're forced to do it like what other fucking option do we have it's either you top it down the only structure that exists as a necessity because it doesn't function it can't be built from the ground up at this point either it's too far gone at that point yeah you know the problem goes even further than that the you know the argument that no one wants to be a lawyer while i run into people every fucking day telling me otherwise i uh i've been trying to get my bar license back for 10 months I uh, finally uh, got a felony today for street racing. Oh my god. Flops, uh, ex BBMC, now Mayhem. That man tried to get his bar license for far too long. It's because it's, um, there's like a idiotic, like, cultural issue within the DOJ, which, by the way, I think Crane unfortunately subscribed to because the problem was under his helm, too. He did, um, but I did as well. I, I will admit I was very much... Uh, yes and no. When, when I was... 
when I was a judge, I wasn't, but when I was a lawyer, we were very snooty and we tried to uh, act like we were better than people, right? Well, I, and I'm going to give Crane a pass because that man has been working, had been working for far too long. Eventually, you're just done, right? You got no more left to give. He was but, probably checked out a year ago. Uh, agreed. The problem is that the everything from the buy license on up is so inherently gatekept that despite the fact, and, and I want to be very clear here that I think the constitution and the way by which legislation is generated blah, 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 is fantastic. It's a great step forward. But they're the biggest blocker is that effectively a singular entity controls the entry point into the DOJ. So in other words, if you want to be a lawyer, it's going to be on their time under their vision. The judges oversee the bar, which is asinine, right? The one entity that fundamentally, um, like... <laughs> You, you get what I'm saying? Like, like the best lawyers have to be targeted, target uh, the heart, the best lawyers in the United States, let alone San Andreas, have to at some level be able to crack a the inherent bias of the judge that they are up against. Uh, it, it happens day in and day out. It's why, like, uh, I'm sure you've heard of lawyers trying to um, have court cases move to different jurisdictions or uh, forcing scheduling changes so they get another judge. They don't always get that convenience. And therefore, they if, if, if for example, uh, oh, my God, it's it's just rough. You, you see what, what path I'm laying here, right? I don't want to dive too much into the political spectrum of this, but um, but it's it's if, if the gatekeeping stops, it starts at the bar license and they're molding to like subjective requirements. You're never going to be able to get anything right. You're never going to get lawyers who then can't be qualified to become judges where uh, then what? You know what I mean? You want to know why? Why is that? The system's upside down. Your numbers need to be extremely high at the top level. Because if you have two to three judges around at any one time, they have people who are on their level, who they can hang out with, who they can discuss cases with. Oh, there's a bench trial? Okay, let's have two or three people take the load. It becomes fun it becomes something you enjoy when you're alone it is miserable and you don't keep coming around and guess what when there's judges around there's paralegals around because there's lawyers around and the yep. system builds the system yes grows. um my vision noticed my vision in los santos county is to build the future for project 2030 and um if i can somehow get pride in that place i think it's possible i'm going to tell you what my plan is and i know that the doj is probably going to do everything in their fucking power to stop it but i'm on that i don't give a fuck shit i want magistrates to oversee um arbitration i want them overseeing tickets and misdemeanors the when i first presented this to justice angel and let her know that i've got individuals that would more than likely make fantastic judges she was open to the idea but immediately even when it came to this whole magistrate thing she's like well it's got to be under the doj fuck out of here you barely have any time to fucking write shit like like they, that doesn't make any fucking sense fuck you so i've decided to open up the government right exactly if you can't do the job i'm gonna do it at the local level and i'm gonna fight tooth and nail for it and like i said there's a certain card i'm not gonna expose that i think is i'm very interested in when i'm able to tell you about it um and from there 
if the framework can succeed, it makes it easier to push it at the top. And, and I don't have the perfect solution, right? But, um, you know, nobody does. But the one thing that's not being done is a valiant effort, right? Um, you know, people aren't working together to try and make the system better. Yeah. That's where it has to start. Yeah. Because uh, if Angel won't work with you, then there's no system, right? And that's precisely why Pred needs to win up north. I have fear for him winning, if I'm honest with you. People say stuff to his face, but they say different behind his back. I'm trying to convince as many people up there to vote for him as possible, but... So many people are stuck in their old ways, Nino. I know it's going to be a shit show up there if Pred wins, but I tell you what, it's going to be exciting because people will be up there. Whereas people will be a up lot there. Of people, a lot of people want to be kept... They, they don't want people prying their eyes into weed... Uh, operations, moonshine operations. They like the quiet life. They like the fact that no one's looking into them. To me, that's boring. I need a thrill if I'm doing something like that. Yeah. I want Fred to win. I think it'd be good for the area. Um... And, I mean, this stays between you and me, but I'm sure you know, Fred is the type who's corruptible as well, right? So, mm. you know, realistically, uh, you know, if people are getting too close up there, we can make something uh, happen with a little bit of money. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not too worried about him and uh, making sure that, uh, that the PBSO opens, that they're not looking too close into things. Mm. I think um, you're not wrong about the complacency. It's what we've been up against. Uh and uh complacency would you rather fly to fucking cancun or fly you know to like i don't know uh what is the most boring like you know what i'm saying like ain't nobody ain't nobody trying to travel to like like you know a fucking complacent fucking place you know what i'm saying that's like Iaho. Yeah, Idaho or whatever the fuck. Like Cleveland or some shit. You know what I'm saying? The last <laughs> one's a little too close to home for me. So oh, Jesus. All right. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Nebraska. You want to go to fucking... You want to go no, to vacation to go. Nebraska? No. Fuck out of here. No. Oh, shit. Yeah, uh, send me to Cancun. I've, I've been trying my best to try to keep Pred at some level of... I've got... There is a level of, uh, this is the thing that Pred's got to realize is, um, and I, it took me a while to realize this is, um, certain opinions need to be reserved because the, most of the public does not have the details and they're going to function off of some levels of emotion, right? Um, yeah. if he goes too strong at Eve, at Andy, at Angel, um, uh, <coughs> You're going to lose people who are just going to know Pred and Angel from their demeanor. And will judge their, base their opinion on that. Um, You're not wrong there, especially with Eve. I think, I think of those three, Eve is the one that, uh, I've never seen a bad, a bad side of Eve, right? So I think of her as just a really nice person who's trying to do best, right? Uh, I've seen the other side of Andy. I mean, shit, she was married to Denzel. You and I both know how Denzel was. Yeah, he's my, uh, I was, I was my brother. Of him. He's fucking scary. Yeah. Um, Eve is, Eve is a sweetheart, but she's very hard-headed. Um, I think she's very easy to be manipulated. No. Which is not a good thing, because... Yes, yeah, I would agree. Everyone else being who he is. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this, but she was a part of my cabinet and then effectively left at the moment I didn't put her soon to be 
mother-in-law in the position of chief of police. Oh. Yeah. And then turned it into a, you don't ever listen to other people's opinion when she was one of, she was two of 12 individuals that I brought to interview some of the other candidates. And then she stood there with her arms crossed and didn't ask any of them a single question. It was in that moment I realized I had made a mistake by bringing her in in the first place. She's been in a lot of rooms. Mm. She should know how it goes. Yeah. At the end of the day, the decision's yours, not hers. Yeah. Uh, first, I think, um, I am looking, I think you, me, and Moose, not, uh, Moose should, um, set up a meeting, uh, sometime this week. I'd like to let you in on a couple things. Um, it's something I've been holding very close to my chest for the past two, three weeks. Okay. I don't know when he's usually around. Um, I can try and make myself available if you set a time and a date. Okay. All right. Easy. Um, <clears throat> I got to get out there and start campaigning. Um, I appreciate your time. You're a very busy man. You're yeah. the type of man I generally don't call, just to be honest, because I know how busy you are. I don't like to interrupt people who are busy. No, I, uh, I use a age old strategy. Uh, don't ever, don't ever worry about it. Send me a text, give me a call. And, uh, I log it in the back of my mind. I need to circle in with somebody. You know what I mean? All right. All right. All hey, right. You need any food and drink? Oh, uh, I don't, but, um, I was told by Bill that you had mentioned to him that Andy Jones and Eve Summers are holding, uh, stash houses. Is that true? So Andy definitely, um, uh, once again, it's, uh, it's what she had her uh so this is information we had we saw people moving into the uh the old town hall that she owns which is her uh her warehouse up in Polito. Mm. now from the person who told me they said they recognized some people as cyprus interesting which makes sense because they lost their warehouses with the raids on the docket at the 404 warehouse down south. And uh, they've lost a few houses that had guns and stuff. So it makes sense they're moving in up there. Uh, us personally, we don't give a fuck who's around as long as they're not making trouble. But she's clearly... Uh, Divine, thank you for the one year. I'll, I'll put it this way. She was meant to try and sell that to us. One year, missing little homie right Interesting. now. Interesting. Um, and uh, what about Eve? I, there's no shot she'd make that kind of risk, especially no, she right hasn't. now. Uh, I mean, um, they do have their own warehouse up there. The whole guild have one, but I haven't seen anyone go in and out of that for a long time. They're just basically paying the fees on it and not using it. Uh, there is one thing I will send you away, and I pushed Pred this in this direction, but I don't know if Bill's got the bandwidth. Um... Eve Summers may be impersonating a government employee. In what way? As in, uh, right now saying she's the mayor? Yep. Yeah. No. It's documented on Twitter. It's documented on Yellow Pages. And I'll derive it as such. The Constitution of San Andreas uh, notates that mayors are elected. Right? So Andy yep. Jones was rightfully elected. The... Uh, legislation pertaining to what is and is not a uh, deputy mayor or whatever the fuck they call that title does not note any sort of passing of um, of operation. Andy stepped down. So that now drives a question of what happens next. Next. Where is the law of secession? You don't just get to make that up. 
Just as much as I don't get to step up and be like, well, I'm the mayor now in the north. <laughs> you know? You would have more claims to it. Or Bobby. Either way, Eve is now operating under no, uh, uh, under the, as the authority of the mayor, uh, of the mayor of uh, Blaine County without any legislative backing. And has likely, this actually goes deeper, would not be surprised if Angel gave her the, the, the mayoral powers. <laughs> Mmm, so if we can adjust <laughs> things and... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we can probably check that out at the I... uh, on the MDT, right? Oh my god, you're right. I know because I was on there when I had a, a chief of staff or whatever Siobhan had me under. Oh, she doesn't. Oh my god, she wasn't. So, okay. So, and uh, if you look at impersonating a government employee, it, it fits the bill. Now, if Pred was smart, he would get someone to file that ASAP because it doesn't matter what happens and what the conclusion of it is. It just needs to look good. It's Does politics 101. You know what I mean? Pocket? Yes, I Bobby. He does. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just, they, we, it just, all they need, all the police need right now is a document outlining the who, what, where, why, and then boom. How many of these twats have you got? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll pass what I can to, uh, you and Moose, but, uh, um, but, uh, there, there's probably an easier way, which is, you catch her and record her talking about her being mayor on recording. Yeah. You just do that at a, if she ever turns up to a debate. Or she's got to show up sometime this week. There's no way mm. she hides the entire time. I think she doesn't show up. I would put money on it. For the next week? Oh, yeah. She'll feel like she doesn't need to. Okay, I, I would have you and Moose cook on it, and let me, uh, let me see what I can gather. Okay. All I'll right. Up with Moose and uh, see what I can do. All right. All right. I appreciate you first. You have a good day, Nino. Is it a felony? Yeah, it is. <laughs> 